All right, welcome on this course to start to learn Svelte.js with Firebase. We are going to look at what is exactly Svelte and how does it work. So basically, Svelte.js, it's a JavaScript framework that helps you to write less code. There is no virtual DOM and this is truly reactive. What we like with Svelte, it's that it's really simple to write code and display it and it doesn't get all the packages that most of the other JavaScript framework got so it's really light. With Svelte.js, uh, if we use the commands just here, we are going to um, take the Svelte.js template in here. But we don't want to waste time, we want to have a router inside Svelte.js already made, etc, etc. The routing system that we are going to use in, in this course, it's going to be Rootify. And Rootify, it's a Svelte template like we have on the official um, documentation of, uh, of Svelte, but with a system of routing already made. So as you see, this command will install for us the Rootify starter template. So as a code editor, I'm going to use VS Code. And I'm already on my um, folder in here and I got my terminal open. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy paste this command in here and I'm going to, yes, there we go, paste it in here and this will download for me the Rootify project. All right, this is done. We have our whole project in here. So let's look a little bit at how it looks. We have an IPA folder that we are not going to use really. We have the assets folder, which will be the whole folder of the, the build project. And then we got the source folder containing many stuff in here, as we see. So if we get back down here, um, we can see that by borrowing our um, template, we've got an example uh, project. And let's check if the project is really working. I'm going to open localhost uh, 5000 and there we go. And if I click on example, we've got our whole project in here, okay, with all the routing stuff, etc. etc. The next step is to install Tailwind CSS. This is going to help us to create all the design of our project. So I'm going to copy paste this line in here. So and here, npm install auto prefixer, tailwind CSS, post CSS import, CSS nano, svelte process, and post CSS. All those packages are going to help us to build our application with tailwind. You have to install them. Once it's done, we follow the guide to tell us what to do. We are going to create a file called tailwind.config.js. Okay, so at the root. So in here, it's going to be tailwind.config.js, all right. And we are going to copy paste this piece of code down here. So I'm going to copy paste this. So we are going to try to know if we are in production, etc., etc. Down here, we need also to create a file called postcss.config.js. So I'm going to get back in here and create this file. There we go. And we are going to copy paste also this one. And then we need to edit our rollup.config.js. So this is really important. Rollup.config.js, this is the um, file that is the config file of our project. And it says that at preprocess, all right, we need to change those two lines in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at preprocess that I have in here. And as we see, this is the same lines that we got, okay? So we need to change both of them. So basically it's just the first one, but require postcss.config.js, the file that we created in here before, all right? And we also need to find the line that we got here, okay? So I'm going to try to find the production in here. And we need to add just under this, this line, okay? To know if we are in production or development. 
Once it's done, what we gotta do, we have to go in the app.svelte in here. And uh, remember, okay, um, as you see here, you've got white text or you may not have the uh, package um, that you need for VS Code. So basically, you have to install Svelte for VS Code. I highly recommend it. All right, so when you get the package, normally it's going to highlight your Svelte code in here. So the last step is to import this Tailwind in here in app.svelte. And if I open again my terminal and I run again my project by typing npm run dev, we see that Tailwind has been applied. We see here that we got an error. And if we got in index.svelte, we see here that we've got a rootify intro. You can remove all of this and just create a main tag in here and update. And if I update, my project is absolutely empty. What I could do is just for now to type a hello and close my main in here and update. And if I update, there we go. Now that we finished to set up our Svelte and Tailwind project, let's pass on the next lesson to the Firebase configuration. All right, it is time now to config our Firebase project. So if you go on console.firebase.google.com, you arrive on this screen. And what are we gonna do first? We are going to create our project. So as you see in here, I already have my project in here and I'm going to click on add project. And in here, what I can do is enter the name of my project. So I can type Pokedex, for instance. All right, I'm going to continue. I'm not going to enable Google Analytics. Okay, once it's done, click on continue. And now you arrive on the dashboard of your current project. So what we're gonna do first we are going to go on here on authentication and we are going to directly configure our authentication system that we are going to use to log in to our application, then our Firestore and then our real-time database. So here I'm going to click on get started for authentication. And in here, what I'm going to do directly, I'm going to Click on here and I'm going to say that, yes, I want to use the connection, okay, with um, Google. So basically in here, what I can do, I can use my address and there we go. After that, we will be able to connect with our uh, Google uh, account. You can also use Facebook. Let's now go on the Firestore. So I'm going to open the Firestore in here and I'm going to click on create a database and I'm going to start on production mode, okay? So I'm going to say, okay. And here I'm going to check on Europe because me, I'm on Europe. All right, there we go. We've got our Firestore, so MongoDB database set up. But in order to write to this database, we have to go here and we have to change it here on the rules uh, panel, we have to allow read and write on true, okay? So I'm going to publish this. If you don't do this, it's not going to work. You're gonna have an error when you want to uh, uh, update your um, Firestore. Now let's configure our database. So here I'm going to click on create a database and I'm going to put it me in uh, Belgium or maybe not in the United States, all right. And here, there we go, start in locked mode. So I'm going to click on enable. And then this database is going to be a different part from the Firestore. Here in this database, we are going to store our Pokemon.json. So in the link down below here, I'm providing you the Pokemon.json file that will be used to check our Pokemon. So basically in here, I'm going to um, remove this, okay, all right. And in here, I'm going to click on import JSON, just here. And I'm going to browse. And here I got my Pokemon.json file. So I'm going to click on open and I'm going to click on import. And this is going to create for me the database. 
All right, there we go. We've got all our Pokémons in here. Okay, now it is time for us to go back on our application in here. And in the source folder, we are going to create a new folder, which be, will be called art. Okay, and this art folder is going to have two files. It's going to have an index.js file. All right. And it's going to have also a config.js file. And the config.js file is supposed to be ignored, okay, in our git ignore. Why? Because we're gonna have in here, we're gonna have in here um, our um, identification code to access our Firebase database. And you don't want that on your GitHub repository. You don't want people to find your code in here. All right? So, Back in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get back on my um, console. I'm going to click in here on project settings. And when I get down in here, there is no app in your project. So what we need to do is to click on here on the web option. And we have to create a web app in here. Okay. So what I can do, I can type Pokédex and I can click on register app. And there we go. Here we see that we got code just written in here. Okay. So I'm going to copy paste this piece of code. It's going to be the config file that I will use to log in to my Firebase console. So getting back in here, I'm going to type this. But what I got to do, I got to export this variable. So I'm going to type export const Firebase config. And there we go. We can now install Firebase and configure Firebase on our app. So I'm going to stop my server in here and I'm going to install Firebase on my project. Once it's done, get back in our index.js file in here. And what we're gonna do now, we are going to write the Firebase config file that we are going to use to check if we are authenticated or not, if we can log in with Google, etc., etc. So basically what we're gonna do first, we are going to import Firebase from Firebase slash app because we will need to use this Firebase in here, all right? We will also need to import Firebase slash auth. And finally, I'm going to import my Firebase object that I got from config in here all right and the name of this is firebase config if i want to initialize my firebase session what i gotta do is to call firebase dot initialize app and i have to pass my firebase config in here once it is done we are going to use an exported constant called init hot so i'm going to create export const init hot and init hot, it's going to be a function. All right, we did all the setup. Let's pass on the authentication part. All right, let's focus now on the authentication part of our application. In the previous lesson, we created this uh, init hot function in the index.js. But right now, nothing is happening because we didn't complete the whole uh, function that we want to create in here. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to close. Uh, yes, there we go. I'm going to write all the function that I need to trigger Firebase inside Svelte. So we are going to start with out. That is going to be firebase.out. All right. So here I'm going to zoom a little bit. There we go. Here out, it's going to call the authentication of Firebase. All right, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to return at the end of this function, I'm going to return all the elements that will be created in here. All right, so what we're going to do first, we are going to call Firebase, then we are going to ask if a user is logged on our app. In order to do so, we will have to be able to log in and we want to log in with Google. 
So first I'm going to create a login with Google, which will be a function, okay? That is going to uh, call a provider. So I'm going to type provider and this provider we call Firebase Auth, Google Auth Provider, all right? So we are going to say if there is a use redirect and you will, we will see if there is a provider, it will redirect directly to the authentication. So if we are logged in, we will be redirected directly. So if there is a redirect, we are going to say, please use the sign in with redirect. All right, of provider. If it won't, please use sign in with pop-up. And basically, we are going to do it with pop-up. But what is this redirect? We have to pass it. We are going to pass it by default on false. Okay? All right. So login with Google is going to ask if we can log in with Google in here. All right? So we have to return this function just down here. But this is not the only thing that we need. We need some kind of store to get our user and store it. So what I'm going to do down here, I'm going to create a user um, store. And in Svelte, you can create a store with writable or readable. So up there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to import readable from Svelte. So basically in here, I'm going to create a user store. So sorry for the mistake, it's svelte slash store. All right, so here I'm going to type readable and readable, okay. And at the first it's going to be null, okay. And we are going to return this user in here. But readable, all right, can take a, a function, sorry, and this function can return something. And this is here that we are going to set our user if he is logged. This is here that we're going to set the on auth, uh, uh, on state change. So on state change, this is the middleware that Firebase is using to, to say is logged in, is logged out. All right. So basically in here, here we are going to say that the variable we need is going to be set and we are going to create a, a constant okay and this constant it's going to be out and on um, on out state change all right and we are going to of course return this answer in an odd state change, we have to trigger an asynchronous function, okay, which will be our user. This is the user that Firebase is going to return to us and it will tell us if we are logged in or not. So if there is a fire user, we are going to do something. If there is not, we are going to use a set and say that here, our store is going to be set on null. So basically in here, I'm going to say that my token, I'm going to await for fire user. I want to get the token. Okay, so if there's a token, it will be get by this function from the object that will be returned. And for the user in here, what we're going to do we are going to use a mapper, a custom mapper, because the object that we will get in here, it's going to be an object a bit complicated. What we want to do, we want to map and have directly the name, the, 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 the mail, the picture, etc., etc. This function is going to be user mapper and user mapper is going to return for us the right object. So here we're going to have an ID. Then we will have a name, 
then we will have an email and then we will have a picture all right so user mapper is going to be used in here and he will claims the token claims okay and of course at the end we will set our user in here all right so now that we have written this file and if you didn't follow the entire course you will get it on the repository on the description of this course um, we are going to use it directly from this index.js we are going to come back later in here because we will do some changes in svelte.js what you gotta know is that there are pages okay as we saw in here but you can also create components and components can be modules so what i propose you to do is to create in here our folder called components and inside components we are going to create an auth.svelte this auth.svelte is not going to be a component that we are going to use as the other there will be no design and no view but it's going to help us to check if we are logging or not and to return all the logic of the authentication so what i'm going to do i'm going just to create a script and in here i have to say that the context of this script is going to be a module with that it means that i will be able later to import this out um, svelte function from here so here i'm going to import init out from my index.js that we got in here so as you see, it's directly imported. We like this. And now that I got this init out, what I'm going to do, I'm going to export a new const. And this const, it's going to be init out. And from init out, what we're going to export, it's going to be the user and the login with Google. So login with Google. There we go. So now from hot, we can call everywhere, everywhere we want, the function that we got in here. So this is really nice to see. But our store that we got in here, a user, how does it look? You cannot say console log user like this. Okay, here it's a, a store, but in Svelte.js, yes, to read stores, you got to subscribe to them. So what we're going to do in here, it's going to be easy. We are going to type user.subscribe. There will be a value and we want to console log this value. All right. Now let's get back to our app and open our console. And let's see on the console if something happened. And we see in here that nothing is happening. Why? It's easy because our component has not been called. So in order to do the things right, I'm going to create an index.js file in here. And later we will import directly the components from this file. So here I'm going to type import out from out.svelte. And I'm going to export, okay, out. All right. So back in my index where I got my hello main, what I can do is here create a real script. And here I can say that I want to import out from components. All right. And here I can go here, say hello. And let's call out to see what is going to happen. Out, and there we go. So I'm going to save. I'm going to get back. And if you got some errors, you will be able to remove the default levels in here. So I don't want to have the warnings. I update. And here we see that hot.svelte answered to me that I don't get any user logged. So let's try to create a button to log in with our Google function. So instead of importing out in here, what I could do is 
importing directly from components and from hot that's vert, importing directly my login with Google. And what I'm going to do in here is going to be really easy. I'm going to say login with Google and I'm going to say on click. So this is how you trigger functions with the on two point click. I want to have login with Google. If I get back in here and I remove and I update, and I click on login with Google, we see that Firebase is triggering the pop-up. And what's gonna happen now? It's gonna ask, I wanna, I wanna have an answer if I can log in with Google on our Firebase session. So if you got a Google account, it's going to ask you, do you want to connect to Pokedex application? And I'm going to type yes. And there we go. As you see, we are logged in here on the application with the email, the ID, the picture. And if I go back on my project and I go on the authentication part, we see in here that my session has been recorded. Now we manage the authentication part. Let's talk about our application and our navigation control. So basically, what we want to do, we want to create an application that could be public and private at the same time. So basically, our application will display a search system and show elements just under it. And if you are logged in, if you want to create an account, etc., etc., via Google, you will be able to put it uh, element to put element as favorite. So here in index.svelte, we've got this button that log us, okay, or um, later it will log out. So what we want to do, basically, index.svelte is just a view. We are interested in the layout. What is the layout? This is supposed to be the public layout that will show every, every view. In this course, I'm not going to show you how to deal with layouts, but if you would have a, a login page, it could be a layout. So first of all, in here, what we got to do, we have to um, say that our slot is going to be under a main element. So here, okay, there we go. And all the authentication part that we had in here, we are going to import it in this layout instead of our view. So here I'm going to open a script and here I'm supposed to import my auth.svelte with this button. So I'm going to take this, get back in here and I can do this for instance with importing login with Google. But here this is useless. What we want to have, we want to have a nav bar. So what we are going to do is in component in here, we are going to create a new file called nav.svelte. All right. And here I'm going to say just this nav. And in my layout, I'm going to import. So remember in here, I have created this index file that helps me to import element directly. So I'm going to save this. So I'm going to say import nav from components. And here I'm going to put the nav just in here. All right. And if I get back to my application and I update, we've got our nav here, which will be here all the time. So on my index, I can remove all of this for now and just say that here is going to be index. All right, so I'm going to close this and there we go. So here my navigation bar with, will deal with every of my views. All right, so let's say that here in pages, I could create, for instance, my profile page. So I'm going to type profile and here I'm going to create an index.svelte inside of it. And I'm going to say here profile. All right, I update 
And with the rootify system, if I type slash profile, I will arrive on my profile page with the navigation. So we see here that the navigation will be always visible. And this is what we want. So I'm going to close all of this. And I'm going to get back in nav.svelte. And this is here that we are going to use our navigation system with the authentication. So what do I need in my nav.svelte? Basically, I first need to import all my functions that I will use. So user login with Google from the component auth.svelte. So basically, we are here in the same folder. So what I can do is directly do this. Okay, so here it's going to be my main bar. So remember, we created a button. So I've removed it in here and I can just copy paste. Okay, right, get back on index. Can just copy paste my button in here. And there we go. And if I get back, I got my login with Google. What I wanna do, I wanna click on login with Google and if I'm logged in, I don't wanna see this button. I would like to see a logout button. But I don't got the logout function done yet. So I got to get back on my auth in here. And on my auth, I can create a logout function. And this logout fu function is simply going to do auth.signout function. And I'm going to export this logout in here. Okay, back in here, I'm going to import, of course, logout, and I will say logout in here. All right, if I update, I'm going to go on the index, it will be better. We see that I got both of the buttons. And what I want to do, I want to display one in a condition and the other in another condition. So as I told you, the user store that we got in here, we have to subscribe to get the value. So in here, I'm going to type user.subscribe and I want to have the value. And in here, I'm supposed to have another um, uh, another um, variable that we are going to call user like this, okay? And in here, I'm going to say that my user value will be overwrite by the subscribe button in here. Now that I got this user in here, what I can do is create a condition. How do we create condition in Svelte? By opening curly brackets, hashtag if, and at the end, closing this if this way. So in here, I'm going to say, if there is a user, so if I'm logging, I wanna have the logout button. But if there is no user, I wanna have the login with Google. Okay? So if I got the user, so the, the store will, will subscribe for us to the value. If there is a user, I want the logout button. If there is not, I want the login button. So as you saw, everywhere in our application, we will have this button. But actually, we don't really want this design. Let's do the design right now of our navigation bar. So in here, here, what I want to do, because I have my Tailwind CSS already uh, triggered, what I want to do, I want to create a full um, nav bar, okay, with justify between element. I want to center them. I want to have a red background, which will be BG red 500. I want to make some padding and I want the text to be white. All right. And if I save this and I get back, there we go. We see that around my nav bar, I have a padding. If you want to remove this, you can go here, okay in your um, global CSS build. And this is the already made build um, uh, from the original template. What you gotta do, you gotta remove all of this. And there we go, we've got our nav bar from here. So now we know that we've got this nav bar in here. What I propose you to do is to do a bit of styling on the button and on the menu that we are going to create just after 
to have our navbar already set up. Let me show you something really cool that I did. I've borrowed this icon from the web of a Pokeball and I have created here the logo of my navigation bar, just in here, by using the URL function from Rutify. So I've created this div with a background white and some padding and inside I have insert my logo.png just in here. So the logo is directly inside my build folder so I can directly have the image. And the URL function with a dollar in front of it is leading me to home when I click on it. This is to introduce you what we could do with buttons. So everywhere in our application, we will have buttons. And I want to introduce you to the component logic of Svelte. So let's say that we don't want to have this button anymore in here. We would like to have a new component, which will be called button.svelte, which will integrate all the logic of a button. And we will pass props to this component to say, appear in white, appear in red, etc., etc. Okay? So what we're gonna do now is that we created the button. So I'm going to import it again in here. Okay, there we go. And here I'm going to import my button from components. All right. So now let's focus on what we can do inside a Svelte component. Let's create a script and then let's create our button logic and let's create also the style. And we are going to cut every part of it step by step and we are going to create our button. So, so you got to know that we can pass props by just creating an exporting variable, an exported variable inside our button. So our button is going to have a title, but it will also get other variables such as the type. So here it could be type red and by, um, by basic, it's going to be on false. We will also have a white button and we will have a disable condition. This is all the props that we will pass, so booleans and here a string, to our button to display the type of button we want. We will have the name of the title just in here. So let me show you how our button is appearing first. So now I'm logged out, so I'm on the condition in here. And what I can do is just calling my component in here by typing button, which will be referred to this one, and say that the title of my button is going to be logout. And if I get back, we see that my button is appearing in here. And instead of having this, I can put the onClick function directly on my button and it will do the exact same work. And it can be the same, of course, for the one just under. So the difference is that the text is different and the function call is also different. Here, we want our button to be on the white condition. We want it to be styled as white. Basically in here, what I can pass I can just type the white in here, okay? The right props and it will say, yes, as you see, as a boolean, put white on true. If you click right now on the button, it will not work because you didn't attach to the component, okay? You didn't attach the on click. And this is really important. You got to type on click in here to say to the component where, when you're gonna click, it's going to trigger logout or login with Google. So remember this, you really have to say an on click on the element that you wanna click and it will be useful later. So in our style, I propose you to write the style of our buttons. 
So first, we will have a class called button. We will have a class called button red. And we will have another class called button white. And finally, a disabled class. In the button, we are going to have the um, basic button classes. So with some padding, border, rounded LG, all right, and outline known because we don't want to have click triggered this way. All right. In button red, the, just the difference is going to be that our button red is going to be text white with a BG red 500 and a border red 502. All right. And in our button white, we will have a text white and border white. All right. And for the disable, we are going to apply opacity. Pointer events known. So let me explain to you what we did in here. We used apply from Tailwind to pick up the classes that we want inside our button. Okay, really nice. But how do we pass the classes now in here? What we're gonna do, we are going to say that by instance, by default, it's going to be button. So the button is going to be this way. And then we want to say that there is another class that we wanna pass and it is going to be button red. Only if red in here is going to be untrue. So class double point button red and there we go. We continue. We want the same for button white, of course. And button white is going to be if white is triggered. And finally, for disabled, it's going to be, of course, the same. But we don't need to open the curly brackets in here. We can just pass disable directly because button naturally know what is disabled. If I get back on my application and I update, we see in here that now our button change is behavior. So as you see, you could create many elements this way to trigger elements, to trigger classes, to trigger elements, to uh, pass props, titles, booleans, array, etc., etc., to your component. This is the component logic of Svelte.js. All right, let's say that instead of having this login with Google button and when I click, of course, I will still be able to log in with Google. Instead of this logout button, let's say that I would like to have my name with a thumbnail. And when I will click on it, I will have a menu that will drive me on the index page or on the profile page or on all the pages that I would like to have. What I gotta do is instead of having this logout button in here, is to create a menu. And by creating this menu, I'm going to introduce you to many points of our course, which will be the store that we already saw by the user subscribing here. Also by the props, as you saw in here, but also with the events that you didn't saw yet. So let's start now by creating our menu component. So in here, I'm going to create a menu.svelte, all right? And I'm going to say menu in here, okay? Of course, I'm going to import also my menu in here so it will be faster. So here I can in export. And just here next to the components, I can type menu. And instead of button, when I'm logged in, I would have my menu. And if I get back, we see that here we are in the menu. So the first thing, I want to get my user inside the menu because I want to have my name. How can I do this? As I told you, you can create props. So here I'm going to create a new props, which will be user. And if I export it, we now we know that user can be a props. And in here, 
I can simply type user is equal to what? The user that is logged in. So I'm going to type user in here. And basically in here, I'm supposed to have the user. To check that, let's display the name of the current user logged in. So instead of a main, I'm, I'm going to create a div. And inside this div, I'm going to create a paragraph and I'm going to display the username. Because remember, in our store, we stored the name. So I'm going to get back to show you here. In our store, we've got this object from the user mapper and we've got the name. So I'm going to type username. And if I get back, as you see, my name is displayed because I'm logged in. Amazing. Let's say that I would like to have also the picture. And I'm going to create quickly the source. So here, instead of the source, I'm going to type user picture. And as an alt, I'm going to put user.name. Svelte is sensitive to the alt. He wants the alt. So I'm going to say class double wait eight h eight. And if I get back, there we go. I got the image. So let me do a bit of styling and then we are going to uh, get the part of the menu. I did some flex in here and I've created this element. So this division with a relative props and it will be very important later because we are going to do the menu on an absolute uh, position. So let's say that here my menu is not open. So what I can do is create an is open on false by default. And let's say that if is open would be untrue, okay, I would display something. I would display our menu. So let's create a div and say menu in here. How do I display this open? So when I click, you see that nothing is happening. What I could do, I could say that in here, on my uh, div, inside our menu, so here you got your menu, but in here you got the uh, name menu, actually menu name, it's supposed to be menu name, sorry. Okay, so you see the difference. So when I will click on it, I will trigger a function called open menu. And what open menu would, would do, function open menu, would change the value of is open on its opposite. So when I click on open menu in here, it would put open on true. So basically we're supposed to have this div display in here. So I'm going to open. Sometimes you may have bug, but it doesn't matter. And when I click, we see that my menu is appearing. What I need to do now is to put this menu as an absolute value because I don't want that my header will grow like this. This is not what I want. So in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say class. I want to have a flex and a flex call because I will have element just under them. I want my text to be on the right. I want it to be absolute. I would make some border and I would put some. I don't want my menu to be over my my uh, name and stuff. I want it to be down. So I'm going to type top 16 and I want it to be on the right absolute. I want the background to be on white. I want the Z index to be on 50 because I want it to be all over everything. I don't want that my menu would be hidden by a page or a component. I want it to be on the top. So Z 50. I want it to be rounded LG. I want it to have paragraph four. Okay. I want it to be text black. So all of these classes of Tailwind are available on the Tailwind documentation. This is why I don't take that much time to show you. And I want to have a padding left of 32. And if I get back, I update my DOM and I click. There we go. We've got our menu display in here. But the thing is, for now, what I want to do, I want to... Um, I want that when I click outside, the menu would be closed. 
For that, I've found on the web a very nice uh, piece of code called on click outside that we'll, we will use now. And I put you the um, code in the, in the description and just copy paste it. And let's see how does it work. When you borrow the file, create a new folder called services and put click outside on it. Why I put it on services? Because I don't want to have too much folders and later we will need a folder called services. So I put click outside on here. So we are going to import click outside as a directive. So up there, I'm going to type import from and here we are going to go on services and slash click outside. I'm going to import click outside. All right. And this click outside will be used in here. So I'm going to type use semicolon and click outside. All right. And of course, what I want to do also, I want to say that on click. So in here, I'm going to use on click outside. Please trigger for me a handle click outside function. I'm going to explain to you why we do this now. We do this now and we are going to create this function just up there. We do this now because we want that the function is open would be trigger on false when we quit our uh, uh, element. So here it's going to be is open on false. All right. So it's going to use the directive click outside where the code is in here. OK, it will remove the, the, the element from the DOM. And if I click outside of the menu, it's closing it. How amazing is this? All of this is really nice. We've got our menu in here, but let's say that I want my logout button just in here. I could import my button, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to put a paragraph in here with logout. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that it's going to be on text red 500. And if I get back, we've got this. How do I trigger the logout from here? By creating an event. So how do we create an event on Svelte.js? On the top in here, I'm going to import from Svelte a function called create event dispatcher. All right, I got my create event dispatcher in here. And what I got to do, I got to create a dispatch variable that will trigger for me the create event dispatcher. Okay, so this is the tunnel from your component child to the parent. So back in here, I'm going to say that on click, okay, on click, I want to trigger a function and this function will send dispatch to dispatch an event called confirm logout, okay? So when I will click on logout, it will send an event on my navigation in here. And how do I catch the event in here? It's really simple on semicolon. And as you see, I got confirm logout as suggested. And here I can simply, simply say that I want to click on logout when I click in here. In our application, let's try now. So I'm going to click in here. And if I click on logout, there we go. It is working. So now we've got a menu where we will put element inside of it, such as going to profile page and we can trigger events. We know how to do it for the whole application. Now that we have created our authentication system and we worked on the menu, let's get back to our index.js inside the, our auth folder. When we create our user on our um, Firebase dashboard, we've got this user recorded. And I propose you today to work on the Firestore. And once I've created my user, I want to store some data inside my Firestore at the creation. So basically what we should do in here is that 
when the user is going to log for the first time, we want to create here a collection. And in this collection, we want to have the ID of the user and we want to store his favorite Pokemon. So at first it's going to be empty. So we are just going to initiate it. And later we will be able to go in the store and change the favorite of this user. Let's introduce now the Firebase part on the front end. So I'm going to go on my services folder just here and I'm going to click on new file. And in here, I'm going to create a new service called firebase.js. In here, I'm going to import Firebase from Firebase app. It's going to be the basic of our library. Then we will need also the Firebase fire store all right but before that we will also need the authentication part then we will also use database remember we put all our pokemon inside the database all right once we've done this what i propose you to do is to define the name of our database and fire store so basically here remember in our real-time database we already created a database which is called Pokemon. All right, so we've got it in here, Pokemons. So this name in here, I should store it into a variable that will be used later. So here it's going to be exactly Pokemon that we got in here. All right, then I'm going to create the collection users database, which will be called users. And here it's for the Firestore place. So make the difference. The database in here, it's our Pokemons. The fire store in here is going to be random data about the user. All right. And in this file, we are going to export many functions that will be reusable. So basically in here, we are going to start by create a function called create user collection. And this function is going to take a user. So what we want to do now, we want to return a promise wait for Firebase to create this, um, um, this collection, and then we make actions. So basically, I'm going to return a new promise, and this promise is going to be, of course, a function. So in here, what I'm gonna catch is the resolve and reject, all right? And in here, we will have all the basic function of Firebase. So first of all, we got to check if the user exists and if he doesn't exist, we create the collection. If he exists, we don't do it. So we stop the function and we say, don't do it. It already exists in order to not overwrite existing profile. So here I'm going to try to find what we call a reference of the user. It could be a reference of another collection, for example invoice, etc., etc. Here we are talking about the user. So I'm going to call firebase.firestore, which is a function. So I'm going to call the library firebase and the firestore function will be what will be extracted from here. And I want to call a collection. So I'm referring first to the collection I want to look in. And here, of course, it's going to be the collection users. And I want to check if there is a document with the user ID. Because what we're gonna do, here we're gonna have a user collection, and here it will be a list of user ID. And when you will click on the user ID, you will have the profile, all right? So the document is supposed to be uh, an ID. We, we're supposed to check the document by ID. Here it's going to be the user ID. After that, I'm going to check. So I'm going to call user ref, and I'm going to say, I want to get it, okay? So it's going to try to get the user ID from the collection user, and it will answer to us in the den, all right? And here in the den, we will have the response as a user document, okay? And of course, we will get also an error and we will reject the error if there is an error. All right, in here, the document 
we will know if the document exists. Okay? So basically, Firebase help us with a function called exist if the document exists. So here we want to know if the document doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, we want to set it. So here it's really easy. We are going to call the user ref and we are going to say set the user ref. So it's going to go on the user collection and put the user ID. And I'm going to say set. And what we want, we want an entrance call favorite with an array. And at the end of this, if it enters or not, we are going just to resolve as easy as this. All right, we've got our function. It's time to call it. So we get back on our index and up there, I'm going to import this function. So from the services slash Firebase. And this function is going to be create user collection. And just before we set the user, we are going to pass the user ID that we got in the create user collection. All right. So let's get back in our application. All right, let's update. Okay, so we just update it. And we see here that nothing happens. And I'm going to try to log in with Google. And I already exist as a user, but remember the condition says, if there is no user in my Firestore, set it. So I'm going to click on this. And there we go, I'm logged in. And if I get back to my Pokedex, and I update. There we go. We've got our user collection with my ID. So you can check my ID XWE, which is here, corresponds to my uh, session. And there we go. This is how you set data in Firestore. You could also do many other stuff, put all the elements that you want. It's as easy as this. So now our session is linked to a, to a user collection we just created. All right. So now let's pass on the next step, creating a store to store locally our favorite Pokemons. We are still in our Firebase.js. We have a function to create the user collection, but we don't have a function to get it. The idea of this lesson is to create a function to get a document and then to store it inside a store locally. So first we are going to create this function. Then I'm going to show you how to create the store and how we are going to link both of them. So it's going to be as easy as this function. So what you can do, uh, and here, by the way, I made a mistake. It's resolve and not revolve in the last lesson. Um, the main idea in here, what we can do, it's to copy paste this function and just change the name by get user document. All right. And it's basically the same idea, but we are going to resolve. Okay. We are going to resolve our um our um oh, i made a mistake in here okay there we go our document so so in here i'm going to resolve my user doc if he exists all right and here we want to get the data of this document because we will have a snapshot all right so we've got our function get user document that we will use later but Let's focus now on creating stores inside Svelte. Remember inside the whole folder, we've created our first store, the readable store of the user. All right. But here it concerns the authentication. What we want to have in our application, we want to have a store for Pokemons. So when we will get Pokemons from the data, we want to store them locally in order to not call all the time the database to get the data. And we want to have the user store to get all the information concerning the user. So the thing, we are not going to stay in the hold folder. 
what we're gonna create is a, a new folder called store and inside this folder we are going to create an index.js file all right so we could create stores at, as we did before inside the index.js so every time create a readable etc etc but on the Svelte documentation, you will find a very nice piece of code. I didn't copy it for this course, but I'm going to show you how to recreate a factory of stores. It means that we are going to create stores that, uh, that have function inside of them and can be created on the fly. So we are going to start by importing writable. So it's going to be writable stores from Svelte slash store. All right. And here we are going to create a function called create map store. All right. So this function will be called to create our stores. So here we, I already told you, we're going to have a Pokemon store store and it will call create map store. And inside of it, we will have an initial object. And this initial object, of course, will be empty. And we will also have a user store. Okay? So in the Pokemon, we will store Pokemon by IDs. And in the user store, we will store all the profile of the current user. There we go. Next to that, we are going to create our store. So it's going to be writable from initial, all right? And we are going to return this store. Amazing. But we can't do anything without using our subscribe function. So it's going to be set in here. So what we're gonna do, we are going to create a set function and this set function will be take a key and a value. And we are going to update our store with key and values. Such an object like this, the key will be favorite and the value will be the array we just put in the, uh, in, the, in the last listen. Okay, so here update, we are going to take the store, okay, as an element and we will assign to the store, okay, an empty object as the store and here we are going to put a key with the value. But we have to return this function and we are going to use subscribe. So subscribe, it's going to be store.subscribe in here. The logic in here is really interesting to understand. We already have our store subscribe in here and this is only what we want. So actually we don't need the store, but we need a set. So we want to read the store. To read the store, we use subscribe, but set is used to set our data. All right, we succeed to create our store factory in here. Of course, you could create as much as store as you want. All of them will have this natural function. All right, now we want to get the user document and put it inside our store locally. What I propose you to do is to get back to the auth component. And this is in here when we get the authentication and that we will call our function and store our data. All right, so in here, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to import, of course, from my um, slash service slash Firebase, I'm going to import my function get user document. All right. And what I want to do, I want to subscribe to the user store that I got in here. And I'm going to say when you get a value, if there is a value, of course, I want to get my user document with the value of the ID of the value, so the user, I, I, actually. And then when I get the data, I want to store it. And if there is an error, of course, I 
I want to console log the error. All right. So I want to, I need an access to the store in here. So what I got to do, I got to import my user store from, of course, the store in here. And if I type user, I got my user store. Amazing. So once I get the data, if there is data, and remember it, 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 it returns to us the data already formatted, I want to use the set function of the user store. And remember, this set function needs a key and a value. And in here, of course, we already know that we are getting the favorites. And actually, the data will be returned like this. So let me console log our data to look at the format. Because here, I already wrote the favorites. But this is not the good way. So let me update. And there we go. We see here that we got our array, which is empty. Okay. So as you see, the data return is an object containing favorites. So we succeed to create our store and to get the data from our fire store. Let's pass on the next step. Now you know how to manage store events. We already worked on the architecture of our project by creating our auth folder with the services and the store folder. What I propose you now to do is to work on our main page, the index page in here. And what we are going to do now, we are going to fetch the Pokemons from our database. So there are many solutions to do this. You could fetch the whole uh, database once, okay, and store it inside your store. What I'm going to show you now is another solution is to fetch Pokemons by their number. And basically in here, what we, going, we are going to do to start, we are going to fetch random Pokemons and we are going to fetch five random Pokemons. We are going to open the index page, which is actually empty for now. And what we're going to do, we are going to start by writing a script in here. And in here, we are going to create a, a function called get random Pokemons. Okay. And this function will get random Pokemons first by getting their random IDs. And in order to do this, we are going to stop our application and we are going to install Lodash. So up there, I'm going to import from Lodash. I'm going to import the random function. So here I'm going to type random. So basically in here, we have uh, 806 Pokemons inside our um, database. So what we're gonna do, I'm going to first console log a random number to show you. And there we go, I got the number 20. Here we see that in odd.svelte, we still have this console log that we are going to remove, which is here. All right, from a previous list. Okay, so here we see that we've got this random number generated by uh, the uh, random uh, function from Lodash. But what we're gonna do, we are going to create in a service in here, services, an index file. And in this index file, we are going to create function that will do the job for us. And this function will be called everywhere. This is why we put them inside index.js. And this function, it will be get a Pokemon by ID. And it will take, of course, an ID as a parameter. All right. Here, we are going to do the same as we did in our Firebase. We are going to create a promise, all right? And for this time, this promise is going to be an asynchronous promise, all right? This asynchronous promise will wait for our Firebase function that we will create to fetch a Pokemon by its ID. So here, we are going to resolve and reject. Basically, we will have to import this function from Firebase in here, all right? But in here, we don't get the function that we want. So 
we are going to get back inside here and we don't get a function that calls our database and get a Pokemon. So what we got to do before completing this function in here that we will call here, we will have to create a function in Firebase.js. As always, I'm going to return a new promise. And in here, our promise, of course, is going to resolve reject. All right. And in here, what we're going to do, we are going to call Firebase. But this time here, we are going to call database. OK, we are going to call database and we want to call a referent inside the database. So we put the ref here and then we are going to call a child. And this child in the database, it's our Pokemon in here. So I'm going to copy paste here the database that we got in here. All right. And this child database have also another child. And this child, it's the idea that we got in here. OK, that's the idea in here. We want to get it if snapshot dot exist. And we still use the function from um, Firebase. We will resolve the snapshot val. So val, it's like data. We want to have the value of the snapshot element. And if there is an error, of course, in here, we can reject this error. OK, so I'm going to get this and I'm going to import it in here. All right. So since get Pokemon by ID is a promise, I can await Pokemon by ID by the ID that we are going to pass in here. And in here, we are going to do also the same. So here, basically, it will return to us a Pokemon. But be safe. Here, we're going to have still have to put a guard to say if there is a Pokemon and go out with a false value. So no Pokemon found in here. Of course, we still have to catch the error. And if there is an error, you are going to reject this error. So now we know that this is going to be asynchronous. Now we know this. What we want to do, we want to create a list. And this list is going to be a new array. And in this list, we are going to store the current Pokemon. Just up there, we have to create a list of Pokemon that will be rendered later. All right. So every time we are going to start this function, we want to empty the array because we don't want that the refresh get us five Pokemon by five Pokemon as we did. We just want five Pokemon every time. In order to clean the array, we are going to assign a new empty array to list every time we call get random Pokemon. Then when we done this, what we're going to do we are going also to create a function called is loading because when it will be log, log, loading, we will show a loader that we will create later. So basically here, what we're going to do, we are going to set is loading to true every time we are going to call this function. Then we want to make a for loop. OK, it's going to loop on five times on all the Pokemon that we want to fetch, so five Pokemon, OK? So basically, in here, it's going to be maximum five times, all right? And every time, we want to, we want to create a random ID. So I'm going to create a random ID like this. And of course, I'm going to copy paste this one we've got in here. So every time, we will have a random ID in here. But also, we have to call our function get Pokemon by ID from services. So I'm going to import from services my function get Pokemon by ID. And get Pokemon by ID is going to call by a random ID. All right. So here I'm going to await from this get Pokemon by ID. OK. And then when I get the Pokemon, it's always the same logic. I want to push this Pokemon inside my list. But in here, what we're going to do, we want to merge the Pokemon by its random ID. OK, 
So here we will have an ID random and then we will have the Pokemon. Why do we merge this ID with the Pokemon? It's because later we are going to use this ID to retrieve the Pokemon and go to its profile. If you've got a permission denied error, let's get back to your real-time database inside your Firebase and at rules, edit the rules to true and write that you got just in here. Once you've done this, you're supposed to get all the Pokemons that you wanted to fetch before. We don't want to uh, check all the time. We don't want to get all the time the data. We don't want to have all these moves. We want to keep in store what we already have. So let's see now how to store the Pokemon we already have. As we did for the OAT system, what I propose you to do is to create a component called Pokemon.svelte. All right. And this Pokemon.svelte is going to be a module. So I'm going to create a new context and this module in here, all right, will do the job for us. So what we're going to do first, we are going to import from the store. We are going to import our Pokemon store. All right. So once we've done this, we want to also import from services slash Firebase. We want to import our get Pokemon by ID function. All right. And in here, we are going to export a new const called add Pokemon to store. And this Pokemon, it's because what we're going to do, we are going to call Pokemon store. All right. And we are going to set the Pokemon, not by its ID random that we fetched before, but by the national number. We, you want to see later that we want to go on the profile of a Pokemon by its national number and not by the ID of its position inside our the database. So now it's done. We are going to get this and there we go. All right. So we've got this function in here. Okay. Add Pokemon to store. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to import add Pokemon to store from components slash Pokemon .svert. And once we have this, we can pass the Pokemon in here. So here we've got a Pokemon. All right and it's going to go to the store. So this function is supposed to show us, okay, the Pokemon store. In order to do so, just to check, I'm going to subscribe. So as you see, he's importing immediately for me this. Um, yeah, here, I think we are not, yeah, I think it's going to work like this. There we go. So here I'm, on, I'm going to subscribe and I'm, I want to see what is the value of the store if it's is going to fetch for us the Pokemons. And there we go. We see that the store is full of Pokemons. All right. Let's talk again about what we did. In our index.svert, we created a function called get random Pokemon. In our index.js from services, we've created a function that can be reusable. All right. And in Firebase, we've got the basic function to get uh, 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 an ID from um, a document by ID, sorry, from the database that we got in here. And in Pokemon.svert, we've got the local logic of our uh, Pokemon store in here. So you got the whole logic of calling an API in here with a local function in here and a dynamic store by the Pokemon.svelte that we got here. In the previous lesson, we succeed to fetch uh, five random Pokemons. Let's now focus on two new components, the loading component and the list item component, which will display a resume of our Pokemon just down there. In our folder, in components, let's create a new file called loading.svelte. All right. And this loading.svelte will simply have uh, HTML and some style down there. OK. In here, what we're going to do, we are going to create just called uh, the image, actually, the image tag. All right. And this image 
tag will be our Pokeball image that we got as a logo, okay? So if you remember in the image, we've got a logo, so this one, and we want to have it and make it turn, okay? So here I'm going to put an alt as logo, and here, basically in here, I'm going to put a class loading that we will use later, and it's with an H, it's going to be on this. Remember our logo got also a BG white and P1 uh, to get a, a white part just around it. All right. What we got to do in here, we're going to do some CSS a little bit. So here we are going to put an animation spin of 500 milliseconds, which will be infinite and is in out transition. So this animation doesn't exist yet. So we are going to create it from here. So keyframe spin. And this animation will take a from NA2, okay? NA2 um, status. So basically in here, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to say transform and we want to make it rotate, all right? So at the beginning, it's going to be zero degree, and at the end, it's going to be 360 degrees, okay? So what we did in here, we created our login component with the animation just down here with the spin keyframe. In here, I'm going to add it in my list, all right? And I'm going to import this component just down here. So I'm going to import loading from slash components. All right. And let's, let's check how does it look first. I'm going to save, get back. And there we go. You see, this is our loading component just down here. All right, let's create a list item.svelte component. And as a script, we will have a props called Pokemon because we will inject all the Pokemons that we will have later. And let's here just, just display for now our Pokemon name, okay? So remember in here, make the distinction between the list locally on index.svelte and the store that we got in our um, Pokemon store. The Pokemon store will be full of Pokemon, but index will have its own list of Pokemon on local that we fetch when we get a, Pokemon, a new Pokemon by ID. So here we've got the list. And what we want to do, we want to inject inside our uh, list item each Pokemon. So back in here, I'm going to add, of course, my list item, which will be here. And actually, it's going to be up. There we go. And in index.svelte, I'm going to import my list item. Okay? So now, let's work on the logic of all of this. Okay? If we will be loading. So is loading. Remember, this is the, the, the variable we created before. All right. If we will be loading, all right, we will um, actually display our component loading. All right. It, if we will not log in, okay, there is two conditions. If there is no length, if, if there is no result, we would say no result, all right? But in every other case, all right, we will have Pokemon. We will have Pokemon in our list. And this is where we are going to work on our each loop. So here, each, hashtag each, help us to loop through every element in list as a Pokemon. And of course, you have to close the each, all right? And this is where we get our Pokemon. What we wanna do, 
we want to inject our Pokemon item directly inside our list item. And instead of writing Pokemon is equal to Pokemon, if I save, you will see that Pokemon is just injected this way. You can do this with props in Svelte. So I'm going to get back and let's see what's going to happen. So at first load, I have this. Amazing. But sometimes you may get error, but here it's just for the demonstration. It doesn't matter. We see that we still are, are loading uh, turning. Why? Remember, because in here, at the end, we didn't put is loading on false. Okay? So what we need to do, and we are going to update again to get something clean. There we go. We've got our Pokemon just in. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a div. And inside this div, I'm going to put a container. So class, it's going to class with full. And it's going to be on LG on 2.4 of what I want. Then a margin auto and a PX1. All right. So as you see here, we may have only one Pokemon, but because this is bugging, we still got, there we go. All right. Let me quickly work on a design and let me explain it to you just after. All right, I've just created this list item component, which look like this. We've got an image of the Pokemon. We've got its national number, his name, his type. And later we will have a button or an icon to set this Pokemon as our favorite. So we've got all of this down here. So this is the list display in index.svelte. All right, let's take a quick look at list item.svelte. What I did is that I have created a grid, okay, a grid in here, and I have did some, some design, okay, so I got a grid call 12 in here, and I've put this colon in here for the image. So the Pokemon image is a Pokemon from Sprite on normal, okay, with a Pokemon name as an ad. Then we've got the national number, we got the name, and what I did for the types, I've created this extra component called label. Let's look uh, uh, quickly on label. Label is just a paragraph that refers in its class to an element colors that I got in here. So basically in here, what I linked is the tailoring classes. So here, the colors, as you see, natural from tailwinds so the blue the purple the 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 black the gray i've linked it to the type of the pokemons because if we look on the pokemon uh, database you will clearly see that pokemon have type okay and each type of pokemon i want to display them inside this uh, label. So as you see here, the internal logic of the component entered directly inside the label. So if the Pokemon has a label um, a type, a type of grass, the label is going to apply the BG green, etc, etc. This is all custom. Let's now focus on the favorite system. So remember in here, I got a set as favorite paragraph down here. And what I want to do, I want to uh, set this Pokemon as a favorite, so Gengar. So basically here, I'm going to import the button and I'm going to create just a button.svelte. There we go. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say that this button will have a title set as favorite and there we go. And we want to make it on red, all right? So there we go. So it's a little big, I don't focus now on the design, okay? So, all right, so what I wanna do 
is when I click on this button, I want to set this Pokemon as favorite. But if it's already set as a favorite, I want to display another button, okay? So down here, I want to say remove, uh, remove, simply remove, not remove as favorite, okay? So I will have two buttons and I will have a condition on this, all right? So basically, I have to check if this Pokemon is set as a favorite. Remember, we have the user store that we can access, all right, from the store, okay? So not services, store. All right, so store, there we go. And this user store contains the favorite. And so what we're gonna do, we are going to subscribe, all right? So basically what we wanna check, it's if there is a value, we wanna see the favorite from this value, okay? And we see that now the array is empty. It's supposed to have the ID of our current Pokemon, all right? So simply what we're gonna do, we are going to store the favorite in here, all right? And we are going to attribute favorite to the value of the store and to check dynamically if we got the Pokemon, current Pokemon number inside the favorite. Down here, what we wanna say, we wanna say that, okay, if we are in loading, we are going to do something Always the same logic, huh? of course, and there we go. So if we are logging, what we want to do, we want to display the login element that we didn't import and that we are going to import now. But if it's not, I want to show the button set as favorite. So in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say if favorite includes Pokemon dot national number, please put the remove button else put the set as favorite, all right? Okay, as we did before, we are going to create the function in the firebase.js file and inside our service. And this function is going to be set favorites to user. And it will take two arguments, a Pokemon ID and a user ID, all right? So again, we are going to return a new promise, which will be, of course, a function with a resolve reject, all right? Then in here, again, we keep always the same logic, okay? So firebase.firestore, all right? Dot collection from collection users, dot doc, and here we pass the user ID because we want to get the document with the user ID. We are going to take user ref, all right? And here I'm going to get, and then I'm going to receive in return a, a user document. And all right, of course, we already check, uh, we always check, sorry, if there is a document that exists. So here we gotta check if there is already user favorite. We don't wanna overwrite the uh, original value. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an existing favorites variable that I'm going to store in here because maybe I'm going to use, okay, I'm going to use uh, these uh, favorites to put my new ID inside of it. And what I'm going to check in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to say my new fav is going to check if there is no existing user existing favorite Pokemon, okay, if it will include our Pokemon ID. Because first, we want to know if the Pokemon is already in the array. If it's not, we put it. If it is, we remove it, okay? So the function is going to do both of our uh, action. All right, so in here, so I'm going to merge my existing favorite with Pokemon ID. Okay, this is basic JavaScript. So up there, I'm going to import remove. Remove from Lodash. All right. And here, I'm going to remove from existing favorites. I'm going to find the current, um, the current ID. Okay. I'm going to say remove the one 
that is Pokemon ID. Okay? So new fab is going to check if there is no Pokemon ID. If not, he's going to add it. If he is, I'm going to take the existing favorite and remove the uh, current Pokemon ID. All right, we've got our right value at that time in new fab. What we need to do now is to use update. Update help us to set in, um, in our um, document the new value of new fab. Okay, then what we're going to do in here, we are going to resolve new fav. We are going to return it to put it inside our, um, inside our store. We also need to put a resolve in here because if we don't enter in this action, we just resolve it. Of course, as always, we've got a catch error. So here I'm going to export a new function called set Pokemon as favorite. And the logic will be almost the same. National number, all right, and a user ID, all right. Then I'm going to get the data and resolve this data. And if there is an error, I'm going to catch this error and reject the error. You know the logic of this. Back in our list item.svelte, we are going to work on this button now. Up there, I'm going to create my own function in here called set new favorite. So here I'm going to await a set Pokemon as favorite. And here in my scope, I already got the Pokemon, the current Pokemon. Set Pokemon as national number. And I'm going to set my user ID. But the thing is, what is the user in here? We didn't import it. I got to import the current user from hot say that user will be user in here. And then when it's done, what I want to do, I want to set to the user store. Okay, I want to set my new favorite array from the data return. If I get back to my application and if I click on set favorite, we see that in my array locally, I have the ID of Sligu705 in here. And if I go on my Pokedex here, we see that on my user and my favorite, I also got the ID of the current Pokemon. All right, you succeed to set a Pokemon as favorite on local and on your Firestore, but you also succeed to create an asynchronous logic between the store and the Firestore. Congratulations. All right. Now let's say that when we click on a Pokemon, we want to go to a page with the profile of this Pokemon. So basically what I did in here, I have created a function called go to Pokemon that is triggering when I click on list item. Okay, so on click, I go to the Pokemon and I pass the Pokemon national number of this Pokemon. And at this step of the course, you still don't get this view. So what I propose you to do is to go on pages, then Pokemon. And in here, as you see here, specifically, I've inserted a slug instead of the name of the view. So between an array, you put the slug of the, the parameter of this page. Here, it's going to be ID. So basically, in this view, okay, I already prepared some design, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to close this, okay, and actually I'm going to comment it. It's going to be faster, all right? And I got my Pokemon, and I'm suppo supposed to click on Rotom, and when I click on it, I arrive on the page with the ID of Rotom, okay? So if I go here, and I look, the national number is 479, and I'm supposed to be on the page. Okay, here we see that I got an object. What I want to display, it's the ID. If I update again, we see that I got an undefined instead of the number. This is because in here, I'm supposed to have the dollar in front of params. And when I get back, I got my number in here. Amazing. What is the behavior we are waiting for now? 
Actually, we are supposed to type any number that we want in here. We want to have a reaction. We want to fetch the Pokemon, okay? So I already worked on the design previously that I'm going to show you later, but now this design cannot work because we don't get any Pokemon. And we don't even know if this Pokemon is one of our favorites. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a function call fetch Pokemon to fetch the Pokemon from the database. But be safe. We want to fetch the Pokemon by its national number. And if I go on Firebase for the Pokemon, I have a get Pokemon by ID function that get the ID of the position of the Pokemon and not the national number. So what I gotta do, what I gotta do first is to fetch this Pokemon by its national number and not by its ID. So you gotta be careful of what we're gonna do now. We are going to create a new function, get Pokemon by national number. Okay, it's supposed to be here to be more clear. So I'm going to call my child from database name because I, I want to get it from the database. And in here, I'm going to use a function called order by child. And I want to order by national number. Okay, order the database by national number. Then I want to know if it's going to be equal to the parameter that I am going to pass in here, equal to ID. And when I found in the database ordered by national number, my ID, what I want to trigger, I want to trigger the on value. On value, it's going to send me the answer, the response. When I get the on value, I want to use snapshot. So as a function in here, as a function, I want to resolve my snapshot val. Okay. All right. So I get this function get Pokemon by national number, I'm going to go on get on Pokemon.svelte. And remember, we had this get Pokemon by ID function. Actually, it's useless because we don't want it by ID in here. We want it by national number. So I'm going to use instead get Pokemon by national number. And I'm going to construct my function called fetch Pokemon by ID. All right, this is how it looks. Fetch Pokemon function is going to return a new promise with the get Pokemon by national number already written in here. And then we are going to return the Pokemon. So the value in here, we got to get an object value of this Pokemon and take the first element of the array. Then of course we use our function add Pokemon to store and then we resolve it. Back in my ID in here, what I'm going to do is when I have no Pokemon, actually, I'm going to fetch it by its params ID back. And there we go. We've got the Pokemon with the national number 479. So here, what I got to do first is to say that my Pokemon is supposed to be P from here. So I'm going to attribute Pokemon to this. And when I get back, I update. There we go, we've got my model with my button down here, which doesn't work yet because I didn't put shuckle as favorite. Remember, from the list item component. So the logic in here, you can copy paste on this Pokemon in here. And there we go, we can check every time the Pokemons that we have. If there is no Pokemon, I suggest you to add a guard and say this Pokemon has not been found, of course. Let's now work on our profile page. So when we go to profile in here, we have an empty page. And if I get back and I go to here, we see that I cannot access my profile page. So what we want to do, we want to have the menu in here to access either the home or the profile page. Let's do it now. On the menu.svelte, what I'm going to do, I'm going to import the URL object from Roxy slash Rootify. We are going to use this URL function to create 
menu entrance, menu anchor, new menu options variable, which will be an array and which will contain objects with a path. So here it's going to be home and the title is going to be home. All right. And down there, I'm going to do exactly the same, but this time for profile. So I'm going to type profile and it's going to be my profile. And for each menu options as option, and we're going to take the index. So here, there we go. Our URL function from Roxy Rootify. And we are going to pass in here the option pass. All right. But we need a key and the key is going to be our index. Okay. And of course here, I'm going to put the option dot title and he put an uppercase. We don't want the uppercase. And there we go. We've got the home and my profile. And if I click on home, I arrive on the home. And if I click on my profile, I arrive on my profile. All right. I've just worked on the profile page and let me show you quickly what I did. Even if I'm sure that you can do it by yourself at this step of the course. I've imported my user logout function and login with Google from hot.svelte. All right. So here I got the button from component and I'm fetching the current user. All right. From hot.svelte. And basically, if I'm logged in, I got my picture, my name and the button logout. If I'm not logged in, I have a uh, paragraph that says you are not logged in with a button login with Google. And when I get back, I arrive on this. So if I click on log out, I'm logged out. If I click on sign in, it's all, almost exactly the same logic as we have in the navigation bar. But here it's on our profile page. And of course, in here, you could add many other options such as unsubscribe from the platform. And if I click on login, there we go. We've got our uh, profile page done. So when I get back in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try again. If I click on Meganium, I'm supposed to have Meganium fetching from the database and it does work. All right, let's finish this course by creating an autocomplete that will fulfill our search by the Pokemon that we are looking at. So before starting this lesson, I already created a component called autocomplete that you can see here with a title. So let's look at it right now. So in the index.svelte, I have imported my autocomplete um, component that will do its whole logic by itself. So you got it in here. And just before I put some title, welcome and et cetera, et cetera. The whole logic will be in this component. And let's look at it right now. So basically, it's basic CSS design that I did. This is why I don't show it to you step by step. But basically, we've got an input. And when we input something with the on and semicolon input, we are triggering a function called searching. And of course, when we will get the Pokemon, it will go inside the array result. And as we saw on the lessons before, we've got a loading display with no result if there is no result. And if there is a result, we just reuse the list item component we had before. So basically here I'm going to search. And as you see, when I search, I'm displaying my absolute flex division down here. Okay. And when there is no search, it doesn't display it while it is searching it. We've got it in here. So let's work on the most interesting part right now, which is creating the function to search the Pokemon. So unfortunately, when you get a database, you cannot query with a filter. You have to use the equal to. So you have to type exactly the name of this Pokemon to get it in this case or the ID or any anything else. Why we have to do this? Because I didn't choose to uh, put all the Pokemon into the Firestore to 
teach you how to use the database. But if you use the Firestore, you could query and have several results. Now we're gonna have only one result by the name, okay? So it's just the example. I'm going to show it to you now. So back in our Firebase.js, we've got a, a function called get Pokemon by ID. And basically we are going to copy paste this func function, but this time it's going to get, be get Pokemon by name. All right, and in here we are going to use the name and it's always the same logic. We get the reference by the child and here instead of ordering by ID as we did, we are going to order by child by the name and we want to get equal to, all right, equal to the name we are going to pass, all right. So here I'm going to remove this and remember in the function get Pokemon by national number, we had the same logic. So I'm going to get this logic and put it just down here and we are going to resolve by the value. Back in my autocomplete, I'm going to import from the services, all right, slash Firebase, I'm going to import my function get Pokemon by name. It is an asynchronous function and in here I'm going to say that if we don't search because remember the uh, search here it's to display or not the menu and the results if we don't search we want to return and do not do um, useless call all right so it this is a guard this is the guard of the function then we still have our logic of loading so we want to make it load and we are going to await, of course, the, um, the get Pokemon by name. But here it's not name, it, this is a search, okay? The search we use in here. So we could push the search. And then of always the same logic. When we get the val, and if this val is different from null, another guard, we are going to push to results, okay? Object dot values of val. So here I put, an array is just by definition because if you want to put several results with Firestore later, if you want to do it your way. But here we are going to apply to results the result value in here. And what we're going to do here to finish also, of course, we are going to catch the error. Okay. If there is an error. All right. And what we're going to do, we are going to use finally. And with finally, we will be able to say to is loading will be on false. Okay, so whatever happened, finally is going to put loading on false. All right, let's test right now our autocomplete. So basically in here, I'm going to type my favorite Pokemon, which is Vaporeon. And let's check if he's founding Vaporeon. And there we go. We've got Vaporeon in here. So we got some design to fix. But how amazing is this? And if I click on Vaporeon, there we go, it is working. How amazing is this? So if I get back in here and I type, for instance, Pikachu, we've got Pikachu in here. So our full autocomplete is working. So of course, we still have in our application many design stuff to fix, but mainly you understand how to create your own Pokédex with Svelte and Firebase.